we're at the just after the crux um so looking down there and this is the fall that i'm kind of a bit nervous about taking um so i've jumard up just above it and i just need to kind of just get on with it and just i don't know see how it feels okay so oh my god i'm just gonna go for it okay ah! holy smokes <laughs> Holy! <laughs> I think I just broke some gear. Oh, that was good fun. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to introduce yourself? No. <laughs> I don't know if I can. I don't know what to say ever. Who are you? Who am I? Um, my name's Anna, and I've recently recently gotten into trad climbing. <laughs> and it's going pretty well. <laughs> I put this like nice big one right here in the middle of our crux. <laughs> <laughs> It almost survived one tug. Yeah, that's pretty good. It would slow to fall down, you know? And it's the most likely place where we're gonna fall. Good mentality. My name is Tom and I am a, what am I? I was gonna say I'm a crack climber, but now I feel like I'm sort of a slab climber as well. I'm out here with Anna to try a route called Prince of which is, one of the iconic single pitch hard trad routes of Europe, especially in this style, which is a very, very vertical, slabby style. It's a fingers crack for 80 or 90% of the climb, and then the crux is a slab. So it's really cool because in this trip, like Tom, I mean, people know Tom for his crack climbing and people kind of know me for my slab climbing. And we found this project that really like beautifully puts both of them together. The bottom sequence of crack climbing on the route features some really interesting jamming, face climbing and long moves, including really tenuous and poor feet, which means that this part of the crack climbing is actually quite strenuous and finally leads to one sequence of this thin crack ending on the slab. The crack sequence of the whole climb is navigating the space in between this crack and then the crack that starts up again. The Traverse is a series of vertical side poles with awkward thumb catches over foot smears that somehow always feel like they're slipping down the wall. It stays pretty sustained for the full 5 meter run out until you reach the next crack and can finally place another piece. It's a full mental and physical crux. The biggest hurdle we've had to deal with really on this trip has been the weather. You know, it's just like it's going to rain for all of these days that we have our trip planned for. So we just kind of learned all the moves and we knew what we were doing and then suddenly it was, oh my goodness, we might be losing at least a third of our trip. And that, that did it upset things a little. <laughs> Can you see that? It's literally raining our entire trip or snowing. We don't need rest days. We just did three days in a row too, but we're gonna do a rest day and we're just gonna plug and chug and figure out gear. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. What does uh, plug and chug mean? Plug in gear. Oh, right. <laughs> and then chug up the line. <laughs> This is not very good. What about this one? Been in Austria for six days. And uh, how many of those days have we been on the wall for? <laughs> six. Six of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the rain coming in, I feel like we've just like panicked. Yeah. 
Yeah. How do you feel? Confident? I don't think it's possible. What? I don't think it's possible. You don't think it's possible? No. I think we've bitten off too much. Well, we definitely have, but I still think we could do it. <laughs> As you can see, we're f***ed. <laughs> Why? I honestly think that we could just visualize really well. Like we know the moves, don't we? So what we'll have to do is we'll have to become like Andra. <laughs> this is so not ideal. A lot of the stuff that maybe doesn't always get seen is the stuff that you actually do on the trip whilst you're out here. If you watch Arno in particular, the amount of preparation that she does in terms of topo map drawing, visualization, strength and conditioning, rehab exercises for her shoulder back at the apartment when we're not on the route is actually really impressive. If you were here and watching what was happening, you'd, you'd make more of an understanding of why these things tend to result in projects getting done because there's loads of background work it just keeps raining. <laughs> it's been so frustrating with the weather, you know, like... I know I can do this, but there's just like not enough days. It's really hard to climb on wet rocks, so... I think I'm just gonna lower myself and... bike back. It's not like an easy win. You don't just turn up and climb a hard bit of rock just because you happen to be quite good at climbing. You, you kind of have to do all the, the other stuff as well. Update. It might be raining. It might be actively, absolutely wet in a lot of, you know, essential moments. But I can still take information in. I can still hone in my data. And I, I think I just have to just keep going, doing as best as I can. So yeah, that's my update. So Anna, tell us where we're at. We are in the final days and it's been raining and snowing and just being not ideal. One of the biggest struggles has been figuring out the strategy. And I'm like literally going insane trying to figure out if it's better to go like today or tomorrow for a red point. Uh, it's just like just, there's so many like uh, uncontrolled variables. It's like, I don't know if the weather's gonna be good, I don't know if it's gonna rain, I don't know if I'm gonna be rested enough. Um. There's just one more weather window, um, Thursday. So hoping for Thursday. It may look like I just cried for like 20 minutes in my room and it, it probably is because I just did that, but, but it could also potentially be because I was cutting onions. Hmm? I have them out here just in case, just in case anyone visits. That's where we are, a bit stressed. And how do you feel about all of the pressure now potentially sitting on your shoulders for the team send? I think you still have some something left in the, the bag here. How's that tea? I'm trying to fix it. It doesn't <laughs> taste so good. I feel like for me, this new introduction of, you know, focus on slab climbing over the last couple of years, going and trying a load of these projects with Anna has been in my head, a, a way to make myself into a better climber overall, like a more technical climber. So trying really hard things where you can't just be strong on your fingers means that you do improve your footwork. And if I can become a climber that can have really good footwork, really good crack technique, those two sort of complement each other better. So I feel like it's gotta be a, a big benefit.
I'm not going to get up this unless I've got cold conditions. I'm not that tired at the moment. I've I've had enough rest days in general to trip because it rained quite a bit. So it's just choosing the perfect optimal time. It's just on like the edge of a bit of rain and then making sure I feel relaxed, feel committed, I feel psyched. Make sure I get some full practice in beforehand because it's a little bit spicy through the crux. Okay. <laughs> And then just going for it, really. Just pulling it all together. On Thursday, I just woke up so calm and confident, which was weird. It was so bizarre because this whole trip I've been like a ball of stress. I called my mom, I called my brother. I was just like, you know, a bit of a mess. It was supposed to be a chill three week trip, and it's back to pressure. <laughs> the people out there need to know that even you have a shit day. No, it's and not it a feel, shit day. And it feels like it's all just not going how you want. It's not going well, but it's not a shit day. It's still a beautiful day. But on Thursday, I, I woke up calm, confident, secure, felt prepared, strong. I kind of took it step by step. I tried not to get too nervous or overthink it. And when the time came, like the sun went down, the wall started cooling off, and I went for it. I went for the ascent, the red point. And I just remember getting there and being like, okay, this is it. And I was just like, calm, cool, collected, just get to the top, move by move. This last year and a half of trad climbing has been really magical. Time and time again, I've shown myself, I've proven to myself that in these moments of heightened stress, I have this superpower of calming down and fully trusting myself, my belayer, and the whole process, really. In all honesty, I'm a pretty fearful climber, and I've often thought that my sends are a fluke because, like, how can someone so nervous about falling do the climbs that I've done? Through head pointing, I've found a way to face my fears that feels really positive and, and empowering. Princip was really special because this time I knew that getting to the top was a reflection of my journey that had started with Once Upon a Time in the Southwest, and really, even before that.
Let's go! last few days have been like my last minute dash to try and get the route red pointed and I kind of feel like I want to go it didn't go that well but I think in reality it's more like all the ingredients for doing the route and my kind of motivation and process and everything didn't come together and, and I got to yesterday where I got out for like one last red point burn and normally on a trip, I'm like, oh, I'm just going all in. I've got to do this. It's on the line. And I was totally not like that at all. I used to, in that situation, go, oh, this sucks. I haven't done the route. This is a problem, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I think nowadays I tend to just go, well, it's not all coming together. I don't feel the deep down desire to do it right now in this situation. And, and that's totally okay because the route still exists. I really like it, I'm coming back. So I get to still walk away from this experience having had an absolutely amazing trip. It's been really cool to see Anna do the route. We've had a really good projecting process. We got to meet quite a lot of locals. Our host where we were staying here in the local town was actually the school teacher of the guy that made the first descent of the route, which is the weirdest coincidence. I couldn't believe that. There's a whole load of stuff in there that was just nice to kind of build in with the trip and gave it that really nice kind of full feel for three weeks in Austria. It was awesome. Is that safe? I think so. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm surfing. Yeehaw! Come close. Yeah! <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>